Welcome to Center of Light, all Yanavite. Center of Divine Unfoldment and Reinforcement. Strap in all my brother and sister astronauts as we launch for Inner Space Center of Light Radio. Radio to ignite your soul and the transformation station. I am back after a year and have a fantastic program lined up for you. I'm very excited about speaking with my guest tonight, Claire Waters. Everyone, if you would, please share this to you all if you have not already. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Dana, for those who have. You are greatly appreciated. Tonight we're going to be talking about raising a child psychic medium. In this forum you will see a group of links. YouTube. Jump seat to my YouTube. Subscribe. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some comments. Helps my beautiful work, my lifelong work to become visible. There's also a donate link in here. All my work is offered as a love offering for the rest of my life to be of service to myself first so I can become full and pass a beautiful torch on to you. Notify me when Keith goes live. There's an ellipsis in here for those who are not so savvy in your English, which is okay. There's three dots in here. Click that and let me know when Keith goes live. I, I, I do about four, I'd say about four would be a good number, outputs per week, be it the radio show or me just doing my spontaneous channeling, somewhat what we're going to be talking about tonight in a little different way. I am now giving readings. $30 for 30 minutes. You will not beat it. I won't play psychic. I don't do that. I will lean into supporting you in your future endeavors of that which you want to experience for yourself, though tuition will be involved. I don't play the sit down with the crystal ball and the tarot card psychic. I can do the tarot cards that may be included, but that is not what we're going to lean into. We're going to lean into helping you to become clear in your vision. There's no more fission between you and what you want. Want? Contact me at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. You can leave it in this forum here, Keith. I would like to spend some time with you for some work or you could send me a personal Facebook inbox message what is happening on earth is not about earth I say this all the time again my guest tonight we're going to be talking about her child who lives on earth but her experiences defy that very idea we're reaching into deeper spiritual realms your loved ones are always around you how do I know that we have an auric field, and if God is everywhere and everything, and then every fragment of light is the all of it. Do you want to reconnect? 
Maybe we can have some insight from Claire about that shortly. Welcome to Center of Light Radio. Uh, I do want to make an announcement um, about an event that is happening in Memphis. Where is my screen? I'm going to paraphrase it. Oops, my mistake. September 21st and September 22nd here in Memphis, Tennessee at the Agra Center is going to be the Four Points Spiritual Expo. Keynote speaker, me. Keynote speaker, Dr. Rita Louise. Keynote speaker, Larry Flaxman. Others, full, it's going to be packed with jewelry and packed with stones and healers and readers and one of those cool events, but Victoria is up the game. She's full of fire. Speaking of fire, I'm going to do a one pre a presentation for myself after this phenomenal interview with Claire Waters on the subject of fire, and it's not what you think. It's actually even better. <laughs> so that'll be about 9 o'clock. That'll be about two hours from now. Stick around for that. We're going to go on a commercial break. We're going to get right back to Center of Light Radio. Uh, also, about the event um, for the Four Expo, uh, Four Points Spiritual Expo. $20 for both days or $15, $15 for a single day. You can contact me. I'll be more than happy to send you all the information you can possibly use to make it easy for you to say, I'm going to be there. Keith Anthony Blanchard, Center of Light Radio, raising a psychic child with my guest Claire Waters. I'm going to be right back. And until we do that, why not simply take a deep, fabulous, life-giving breath? guide you in whatever you do. Just remember to breathe and do your very best to live in love. Give in love. Be in love. And love you shall receive.
Welcome back to Center of Light Radio. I am Yanava. I am your host. Some people call me Keith. I'm making a shift deeper into my spirituality. What does that mean? What that means is I'm using this opportunity to change my name, to change myself, to change my identity. In fact, it's a more of a losing of one. And Yanava is my spiritual higher self soul name. It's all of our sacred seed syllable selves. Ya heart will God. Na mind intellect reason when used balance. Va backbone that carries out your soul's desires. Yanava. Welcome to Center of Light Radio. Let's get down to Center of Light Radio business. Tonight my show is titled Raising a Child Psychic Medium. My guest is Claire. Waters, let me tell you a little bit of the story so we can set it up very nicely. Raising a child psychic medium. <laughs> wow. I'm thinking to myself, how do you do that other than very consciously and very <laughs> aware and grounded? Uh, let's talk about Faith, her daughter. About Faith. When Faith was four years old, we discovered that she was a psychic medium. That is, she could see, hear, feel, and communicate with people who had died. I see dead people. <laughs> Faith is now a young teenager, and I bet she's just gorgeous in all that light and glory. And the journey we have been on together as a mother, daughter, and family has been extraordinary. I don't think it has any choice but to be anything other. Faith has learned to manage her gift alongside a normal life, both at home and school. Our book, Raising Faith details how Faith experiences her gifts, how Faith experiences her gifts, the lessons we have learned about how to manage, how to help her manage these experiences. I'm sure that was a task. And how we have overcome any difficulties and challenges so far. About my guest tonight, Claire Waters. Claire lives in a rural Hampshire, if I could say that very bastardly attempt. <laughs> In the UK with her husband and two children, Faith and Tom. When the children were four and two years old, respectively, Claire learned of their psychic medium of their, wow, both, psychic medium abilities, and she subsequent, subsequently began a journey to learn as much as possible about psychic matters and the spirit world to help and support her two children with their gift. Since that time, Claire's own psychic <laughs> right abilities continue to develop, and she loves learning about psychic experiences and spiritual truths and lessons. Professionally, Claire is a registered classical homeopath with 12 years experience managing a successful homeopathy practice. Claire has also extended her training to include nutrition, kinesiology, including food testing, and Reiki healing. Claire's interest in nutrition and food sensitivities began after discovering her children and many other sensitive or psychic individuals who are often affected by the food that's eaten. You can find more about my guest at www.raisingfaith.co.uk. Welcome to Center of Light. Claire. Hi Keith, thanks for having me on your show. I'm glad you're here. I don't I don't know what to ask you first. How do you raise a psychic child medium? Well, most of the time it's exactly the same as a regular child, but we just have these moments of extraordinary dropped in. Um, and I think the fact that Faith has these gifts, she is she's pretty unique uh, compared to other children of her age and always has been. She's always been a wise old soul. She's always managed this gift um, all by herself, even before I found out about it. So um, I think she, you know, she came here to do a job with this gift and she has the type of personality that, that is able to manage this. She's never known any, any differently. So yeah, she copes really well with it. Um, and it really, you know, it wasn't until I found out about it when she was four and I realized, goodness, she's had this for all these years and been so involved with it. And I didn't even realize. So, um, yeah, she coped with it for so long and, and continues to, to be honest, that even now there's 
lots of experiences she has that I'm not involved with. Um, she just deals with it herself, always has. When this first came to light, how old was she? She was four when I was told that she had these abilities. Okay, she so three years, 364 days go by, and Mommy Claire knows nothing. <laughs> yeah. One morning, Claire Waters wakes up, and your life turns into something else. What happened? What was what came out of the babe, out of the mouth of babe, babe? What came out that you said, "Whoa, what was that?" No, well, the thing is, she'd never volunteered anything at all, and it was um, me contacting a psychic medium about a completely different topic. It, I'd read a book on past life regression, and uh, was put in touch with someone who could tell me more about it. She was a psychic medium. And I had loads of questions for her about that topic. And it was then that she mentioned that both my children have psychic medium abilities, but particularly my daughter Faith was very much um, living as much in the spirit world as she was in this world. She was totally connected in every way. Um, and yeah, it took me a good couple of weeks, to be honest, to pluck up the courage to ask her because, I, you know, I just didn't know what to think. I wasn't involved with anything spiritual. Um I'd always believed in spiritual matters. I'd always believed in psychic mediums. Um, I'd always been quite fearful, though. I never particularly wanted to go and see one myself. Uh, so this was completely new for me. And, um, yeah, quite frightening. Uh, and when I did finally pluck up the courage <laughs> to ask her, I was even more frightened. <laughs> I, I'm trying to put myself in your experience when it first, and I'm not trying to blow this up for fluff and rate, none of that. Seriously. It just seems so out there. Of course, I, like you, we always believe in it. We, in fact, at least hope it's real because it's a beautiful idea. How long did it take you for to settle into this to where, and where you actually started understanding the language? Would they be, uh, would there have been a language that came from this? And I don't mean just the talking. The spinning of the energy, the experience, and faith faith conveying this to you to where you all actually have a grasp and somewhat balance in, in this whole dance. Um, I don't know how long it took me to get used to the idea. I, I mean, certainly for a good few weeks after I'd spoken to her about it, you know, I slept with one eye open because I just <laughs> couldn't quite get my head around. <laughs> Who are these people and, and where are they and what are they doing and... and what do they want with us? And, you know, male, female, and, you know, there's men in her bedroom. Who are they? And, you know, all these thoughts run through your mind as a parent. So for me, it was, she wasn't frightened in the slightest. She, you know, this is completely normal to her. She couldn't understand my interest in it. Uh, for me, uh, yeah, no, it took me a little while. And I think more than anything, my my sense of parenting it's, it, it, for me, it was more the fact she, she was so little and she was involved in something I knew nothing about and had been for four years. And I was just keen to protect her and to understand more about it so that I could protect her. Um, so, uh, you know, part of me really did want to sweep it back under the carpet. I wanted to pretend it, it was just all nonsense and it would just go away and I could go back to life as normal. But it was very much, I remember saying this at the time, it was a bit like watching The Matrix, you know, where once you realize there's a whole nother reality, how do you go back to the, the reality that you thought was reality, you know? You it, can't. No. It you was can't. like Pandora's <laughs> box was opened, and, and now I'm, I couldn't go back. Um, especially if she was in it and involved with it, I couldn't just pretend it wasn't happening because as a, as a mother, you know, it was my responsibility to make sure that I could help if I ever needed to. Um, so, yeah, so I, it didn't take me so long, but the lady who told me all about her also was a very advanced psychic medium herself, and she ran development workshops, and she spent lots of time with me one-on-one, -on -one, very kindly offered her time, and taught me lots, and I went to workshops and learned as much as I could, and yeah, it, it was, and it was a whole new experience for myself and Faith, because we you know, I was curious. I wanted to understand more about it. So, you know, bedtimes became quite different. <laughs> Did you like nudge her a little bit like, hey, Faith, can you give me a little bit of information tonight? Or was she like, mom, leave me alone. I don't feel like it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've definitely <laughs> done that. And she's, she's definitely said, you know, no. Um, so 
bedtimes was definitely the time when she was more inclined to talk about it. You know, she was quiet. She was settled down. She'd had a story. She was relaxed in bed. And, you know, it's always easier for spirit to come through when we're relaxed and we're not surrounded by technology and hordes of other people. So it was a good time for her. And I'd see her watching people around the room and I'd see her sort of listening. And I would just say, you know, who is it? Who can you see? And she would just tell me, you know, not fussed, but she would tell me most of the time who was there. Sometimes she'd just shrug her shoulders and not really want to talk about it. But most of the time she would talk. Um, so I learned a lot through her from spirit. I learned a lot about the people that visited us. Um, some of them were relatives, obviously loved ones we'd known that had passed over. Some of them were spirit guides. Um yeah, I learned so much because at that time we didn't particularly confide in other people. I mean, I wasn't on social media at the time. And on the occasions I did try to mention it to friends and family, most of them scoffed at the idea and thought it was all nonsense. Didn't work so, so well, did it? <laughs> and so we're pretty much on our own. Um, but I learned a lot from spirit, you know, through faith. So, um yeah, it was, it was, I mean, it still is. It's just different now. Obviously, she's 14 now, so life is different. But certainly all of, all of the basics I learned back then from her and from the psychic medium who was kindly giving me her time. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, everyone. My name is Keith Anthony Blanchett. Yana Va here with my guest, Claire Waters. And tonight we are speaking about raising a psychic child. Oh, Gavin Lee Davis. Hello, Gavin. Gavin just posted a link in the forum. Um... If you're interested in this beautiful work, um, jump seat to that link from that link to Amazon and purchase bestseller. Yeah, Faith? Uh, Claire. Uh, yes. Yeah. No, it's doing really well. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Gavin is a very special guy to me. He opened up a brand new door for me recently in the book publishing world. So I want to acknowledge him publicly and say thank you, my friend. So. The experience is starting to swirl and everybody's starting to find find <laughs> their place. And then mommy instinct kicks in, I'm assuming. I'm playing out as if parents can be in a very cool way. All right, my child is open. Oh, shit, my child is open. Is anything bothering you in there? <laughs> Did that conversation ever ensue? Like bad people, bad energies, and if so, what does she do with such things? Uh, well, in all honesty, up to the point of writing the book, she'd never had any frightening experience, ever. Um, everything had been great, everything had been good, she'd never been frightened um, at all. Uh, so no, up to the point of writing the book, nothing at all. We, I mean, I'd had an experience myself that was quite frightening, but it didn't really have anything to do with faith, it was more to do with something I picked up from my work with my own patients. Um, but no, we'd always been really fortunate that we'd always had lovely experiences, lovely spirit visitors. Um, we have since had an experience, which was exciting. <laughs> um, last Halloween, actually, yeah, we had a, a visitor that taught us some lessons. Um, yeah, it was a lady. Uh, she'd been reading a book at school as part of the national curriculum here in the UK. And it was about the lady in black, which is quite a frightening text, um, quite a frightening lady and I would excuse think, me Claire would this be the same as the old hag I don't think so this is I mean, not something know. to do with the astral realm where the old hag sits yeah. in your chest is it okay please no. forgive me please continue no it was a different story um, that they write about in school and I think she became so involved with the story that I think it opened a doorway and allowed somebody with a similar energy to come in so she then had a visitor in her bedroom for some time that we weren't, it was difficult because she couldn't understand because it was so similar to what she was learning at school. She was wondering if it was real or not because she was confused as to why this woman in the corner looked just like the lady she was reading about. And it took me quite some time to figure out, no, it actually really is someone in your room. And the closer we got to Halloween, the more scary she became um, and her activity increased. And um, yeah, and it was really only when about a week or so before Halloween, she came flying downstairs and threw herself at me and hands clamped on her ears, screaming, you know, help me. The lady's screaming at me. She's screaming a date and she was really frightening her. And that was the one and only time that Faith herself has ever experienced anything frightening. 
but as soon as I confronted the lady and said to her, look, please, you're frightening us all. Can you just stop and I'll get you excuse some help? Excuse me, excuse me. Would you please, for me and the listening audience, define you confronting the lady? I... Well, I first of all asked Faith, can we talk to the lady? And she sort of screamed, no, I don't want to talk to her. She's far too frightening. And then I thought, God, what am I doing? You know, why, why am I asking my daughter to do this? So I said, OK, I'll talk to her. So just the lights were flickering in the room. I could feel the energy change. My spirit guys had stepped in close to me. It was like something out of the movies. And, um, and I just said out loud to the room, literally, I just said, you know, uh, I don't know who you are, but I presume you need help and you're frightening us all. Please, can you just step back um, and I will get you some help. And I turned to Faith and I said, is she listening? And she said, she's gone. And she literally stepped back as soon as I'd asked her to and promised her help. Um, and then she was around for a, a while longer. She was around for a few more days um, while I was getting someone to help us. Um, I contacted Stuart Keyes, who's a British celebrity psychic medium, and he's written the foreword to Raising Faith. And I contacted him. He was on holiday, which is what took me so long. And, um, yeah, he dealt with it really swiftly. Um, and the lady, my son Tom, did spot her dashing from my room into Faith's room the following evening. And I said, you know, because he was frightened. And I said, it's OK. She's just trying to stay out of your way because I've asked her to stay to stay back because she's frightening you. And she did, to be fair to her. She, she didn't mean us any harm. She wasn't trying to hurt us. She just needed some help, I think, and Faith being that beacon of light was the quickest way for her to get some attention and some help. What about Tom and his ability? He, he does see them, obviously, because he saw that lady, but he's not as tuned in as Faith. So where she can still see them and talk to them and hear them and feel them, um, he's different to that. He can sense them. Uh, which frightens him because he can't see who they are, but he knows they're there and he can feel their energy. Um, now and again, as I said, he'll see them, but not not as often. And he can't hear them the way she can. Um, but he has his own experiences. He had a bedroom full of visitors literally a week ago um, where he came to me and said, Mum, there's something wrong in my room. And I said, well, you know, go and ask Faith to help you. Um, she, you know, she's the best one here who's going to know who they are. <laughs> I go to the child. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean. Child. She's such a wise old soul. So in she goes and she sort of comes out and gives us a funny look and says, mm, yeah, I, I can see why you're worried, Tom. She said, there's actually people around your room wall to wall. In fact, she said, there's so many of them. I can't see the individuals. It's just a mass of people all around his room. So he'd felt that energy. He'd felt that. You know, energy. and I can understand his apprehension. And I'm mm. sure he has a big toe and a, his foot in that arena enough mm. to understand what's happening. But I can understand his reservations. You know, you all around me and you're buzzing. But I can't see you. I don't know what your agenda is. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he's just 12. So for him, he goes to bed at night and, oh, my gosh, suddenly my room is full of all these people and all these energies. And, um... But again, they didn't mean us any harm at all. They just, they were moved on by his spirit guides. They didn't need any intervention. Faith, we're going to go to commercial break. When I come back, can we talk a little bit about your abilities that have opened up sure. since all of this? And what does, what did hubby think of all this? Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Let's save that for a moment. Everyone, my name is Keith Anthony Blanchett. Welcome to Center of Light Radio with my guest, Claire Waters. And we are speaking about raising a psychic child dig it enjoy some lavender soul we are going back into the studio lavender soul is my spiritual band comprised of members of the memphis symphony orchestra i'm very excited center of light radio going to be right back share this to you all bring people into your fold they may not like the water so much but once they get in there and get wet it won't be so cool see you know? <laughs> You will never be alone. I am. All of my life, all of my days, I feel you. Yeah. 
days I've seen places far Hello beautiful friends, Keith Anthony Blanchard here with an amazing product offer. We have been hearing about hemp oil for the last couple of years and its potential. Let me introduce you to my dear friend, Ms. Jackie Atwell. Our oil helps bring your body back to a state of wellness. It is also used as a preventative from illness. It works by bringing the body back to homeostasis and balance. It's a natural, organic, non-GMO, full-spectrum oil third-party tested and comes with a certificate of analysis posted on our information page awesome anti-inflammatory and antioxidant if you're suffering in silence give it a try you have nothing to lose and everything to gain 60-day empty bottle money-back guaranteed refund to order go to www.hempworks.com slash Jackie Atwell that's www.hempworks.com slash Jackie Atwell Welcome back to Center of Light Radio. I just got me a new light. Check this out, y'all. I need my toys. I have a lot of fun with what I do. I love my life. So I used to use this lighter. I've been using it for years, and the battery's dying. So I treated myself to a lighthouse. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, back to Center of Light Radio. I'm having a phenomenal, beautiful, inspiring, uplifting conversation with my guest tonight, Claire... Waters, let me find the screen, and there she is in all her delightful glory. Welcome back to Center of Light. So, we've been talking about 
your daughter mainly. She's the rock star of this whole yeah. thing. Bless her heart. And then we introduce the brother or the son, Tom. And before the commercial break, we decided we, or at least I thought might be a great conversation. Because in your bio, it did say that over a course of time, mommy became illuminated. So how long? No, let me, let me, let me start over. So this is happening. <laughs> and hubby catches wind of this, or you, you tell him about it. What was his position? And I don't mean to make light of this. I'm curious to know the dynamic that comes along with raising a well, child psychic is. medium. He kind of stared at me blankly, really, in all honesty, <laughs> <laughs> and still does to some degree. <laughs> he um, he just really struggled to get his head around it. You know, he'd never thought about psychic mediumship. He, you know, his whole family, just they're not that way inclined. And so for him, it was like I was talking an alien language. Um, so when I first suggested what I discovered about the children, you know, he sort of looked at me and very, you know, very willing to listen, not dismissive, but just really very blank, really, you know, seriously, there must be another reason for this. There must be another explanation that's, you know, it's not quite this out there. Um, and in all honesty, even though, you know, we've tried to talk to him about it, we've tried to validate things, he's still on the fence. <laughs> he's just, he's still on the fence. He's still not sure he's kind of willing for us to do this, but yeah, he would like some really nice concrete evidence and he just doesn't get concrete enough really to satisfy him. So he he doesn't really get that involved in it. It's it's kind of something myself and the children are involved with. Um, he sort of, he, you know, experiences it. He was there at Halloween when the lady came and he caught the lights flashing. But the there's definitely like been moments when he was like, whoa. And then, of course, he may continue, but he had moments where he was truly stepped back, Yes. He's had some, but not enough for him to really think this is amazing. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, you know, when you're skeptical, then you're, you take a lot of convincing, I think, you know, there's, there's people that are going to always believe, there's people that can be swayed to believe. Um, and, and he's somewhere between that and not believing, you know, he's like, well, maybe, but surely there's another reason. So yeah, he's just the grounding one, really. He's the one that just keeps us rooted. <laughs> so how long once the awakening, or at least the revealing, or the understanding of something changing, did it take for you? Did she teach you, or did you have the gift that she kind of helped refine the process a little bit, or did, did it just spontaneously happen to you? It was more, I think I've always been intuitive, as many of us are, and I was possibly already using, I think I was already using my intuition anyway in my homeopathic work with patients. I could sort of tune into how they were and what they needed. You know, that was just an extra sense I had. But I wouldn't have called it psychic at the time. And then it was really only when I started exploring the spirit world and attending development workshops. I didn't go to many. I just went to a handful to try and understand what faith was experiencing and what it was all about. And it was at those workshops where I realized I was able to do some stuff by myself as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, different workshops. There was one of them. I stood on the stage in the spiritual church and with the help of a medium, I might add, not by myself, as in she was giving me energy. I was able to see someone, visualize someone and describe this person and their personality and visualize the message. I wasn't so good at understanding the message, but I was able to tell them what I could see. And, um, yeah, it turns out she looked just like someone in the audience who knew exactly who I was talking about. So that was great. And then other experiences, you know, different development workshops where we got to try different methods. You know, you use colored ribbons, you do drawing with crayons, you, you know, um, rune stones, tarot, all of that. Again, I was able to give readings to people um, during my work there. So I obviously had something, but I hadn't been aware of it beforehand. Um, and now I don't particularly use those skills in those ways because they were, I don't know, I've never particularly felt like I could do that on my own. It was more because of where I was that I felt I could do those things because I was there to learn. But day to day, I use my gifts. I have a gift of touch. So spirit touch me on my body to tell me that they're there. And they can use that as a signal to answer yes and no to things. So a bit like some people use it, Matt and I do as well, a dowsing crystal. I can ask similar questions and I can get my answers through touch instead of the crystal. 
Yeah, every sensory object of ours is, is able to take in information. I've always said seeing has nothing to, well, it does include this, but that's not what seeing is. Seeing is the ability to be aware because awareness, hearing can be an awareness that allows you to see. Would you say so? Like yeah, touch or smell? Yeah, totally. I mean, I've written about it in Raising Faith. Smell is one of the key ways that spirit have used to contact <laughs> yeah. us. You know, we get many visitors, well, many. We have some visitors who announce themselves through smell. Um, they say easy. that smell is one of the most powerful sensory inputs. That mm -hmm. it will take you back to a memory of your past just like that. From the chat room, Pri asks or says, uh, children throughout my family have been able to seek and talk to spirits for generations. My culture is very spiritual. I was just wondering. The feed is moving. Wondering if this could be inherited, blah, 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 so forth and so on. I think the, the sum it up is, let me ask you this. Do you have any history of this being in your family? I don't know why I'm getting grandmother from you. Do you, do you have this in your history at all? Um, I don't have anyone who we knew was a psychic medium. I had a grandmother that used to go for spiritual healing at a spiritual church, but she would never have said she was psychic or had any abilities of her own. She went there to receive healing. Um, so neither of them were into spiritual things in any other way. My mum is, is quite spooky, we've always called her. You know, she's always had a bit of a, a strong intuition, a strong sort of feeling about people when she meets them and so on. So again, just very intuitive. But that's really as far as it went. And I don't know any further back than that. We're not aware of any more. This is such a fantastic conversation. You know, I've always known it. I believe it. I've watched all the, read the Raymond Moody stuff. And, and most people, when we talk about psychic mediums, we automatically into them because it's geared that way into contacting. <laughs> so what about the spirit world in the form of a spirituality guides and angelic forms do these beings just come in and has your daughter or you asked her to say you know who are my guides what are their names what are they trying to tell me i need to be working on and she says well of course mama 1-800-555-2399 and that's <laughs> how does that how did that work for you yeah no definitely i mean um Sometimes uh, I'll ask a question like I want to know about a spirit guide or, you know, who is that I can feel tapping on my head today. And she will tell me um, who it is. We've had that a few times. Um, there are other times we ask a question and she just gets given the answer. Trust your instinct. So there are times when I'm not allowed to know and they what they want me to do is to use my own abilities to tune in and figure it out myself. And I can't shortcut all the lessons in learning. So they don't they don't always answer. They'll just say no, not today. Uh, but a lot of the time they do. And I have learned quite a bit about some of my spirit guides over the time. There was one in particular that I write about in Raising Faith, my main guide, my gatekeeper, Will, who's with me and always has been since I was born. He. Um, Somebody, a different psychic medium, had told me that he was a small Chinese man. So I'd gone around for some years thinking he was a small Chinese man. And for whatever reason, I was with Faith one evening in her room and I mentioned the fact that uh, he was a small Chinese man. And she just stopped literally everything she was doing, had a huge smile on her face and shock. And she turned to look to the corner of the room, doubled over in absolute hysterics. She literally turned to look at my guide as if to say, can you believe what she's saying? Have you heard what she's just called you? And I said to my wife, this is so funny. And she just, what, once she finally stopped laughing, she said, what on earth made you think he was Chinese? And I said, well, I was told this. What is he then? And I felt quite silly. And uh, she said, no, she said, he's not. And I said, well, who is he? And so she turned again and she waited for him to give her what, you know, what, what she wanted me to say. Uh, which one of me here? And she said, um, "No, she said he he came from Devon." She said, and he worked in a shop, like a corner shop. She said when he was here, and he drowned on a ship. She said um, he he's not Chinese at all. He's British. And I said, "Oh," I said, "Well, what ship? How did he drown on a ship?" And she and she just turned and she said, "In the war." Um, he couldn't get out. She said he was trapped underwater and he couldn't escape in time. And it was her that told me his name. So, yeah, just um, 
that was one of them. So again, she, you know, she gave me some information there, but other times I get told, you know, no, you have to. Claire, I get out. the feeling that there's a there's a couple things in play for me as I hear this beautiful story. One is the word psychic medium to me, and I would think to many people, probably to all people, unless you're Claire Waters. <laughs> Psychic medium to me means someone who has a gift and they miss. Sometimes they simply miss. You get these cold reading psychics. I'm not saying they, have, they don't have an ability. Whoever they may be, I can name a few. We know a few of them. And someone, okay, they, they're walking around the arena and the audience and they say, someone here has a son who was killed in a motorbike accident. Of course, it's not that it's not powerful and it's not that it's not very valid. It's the whole dance between the reader and the audience that creates the spin and allows people to fall in and the medium goes into his zone. I get the feeling this is not the case with your daughter. And this is why, what I get from this. One, your book is bestseller. It valid, it's a part of the validation process of the anchored energy. Two, this happens so young with your daughter. It's transformed you, the son, and the daughter. So does she ever say, Mommy, I was mistaken? Or this is just something like a window that's open for her just as simply as it would be looking out your window into a backyard. Yeah, it's just second nature to her. It just doesn't, you know, it, it, she's never, to my knowledge, there's never been a, I got that wrong. And so, um, yeah, and so, when I, and I'm glad you said that because I want to close this whole thing off with, when you have a gift and you're able to use it as an intuitive, you can be inaccurate sometimes. That's a good word. But when you are on point because you are truly have a foot in this world and a true uh, a foot in that world, that this is not normal consciousness. This is truly an, a plant of light and awareness energy inside of this now adolescent. Yeah, I mean, I think as she's gotten older, her sensitivities aren't as strong as they were when she was younger, and I think that's pretty normal. You know, she's 14. She's at what we call secondary school, which is between ages 11 to 16. Yeah, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of people there. I mean, hundreds. It's a huge school. Claire, do you think, uh, sorry, do you, do you think it's because, I understand that being youthful, before we impregnated with the world and everything, trying to be beaten into us, that we lose that most most of us as children do do you think that that's somewhat some part of it or do you think on some level she's making a choice you know i'm done with this i want to be this for a while or do you think that she's so freaking good that she can open that door when she wants yeah i think it's the latter because <laughs> you know when she went to this school she said look i just want to be normal i just want to be like the others and it's hard for her she's a teenage girl she wants to fit in and so you know i totally respected that and said that's fine it's your gift um you know i was kind of disappointed it was great for me i was thoroughly enjoying myself but at the end of the day it's her gift not mine so it's down to her when she's ready to share that again and in recent months um sort of as we've got closer and closer to the book coming out more activity has been going on and she's a little more open at the moment she's a little more willing to talk about it you know she's 14 you have to catch her on a good day but she will um <laughs> she she will she'll you know particularly when we need help like you know when the visitors in tom's room and she will absolutely go and, and check that out for us and tell us what's going on in there um so she clearly still has very strong abilities I don't know that she's got a foot in the door quite as strongly as she did when she was little, but she's certainly got some impressive abilities um, still. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just the other day I came down for breakfast and the dog was staring at the larder where we keep all the food. And um, I just offhandedly said as she came downstairs, as Faith walked down, I said, you know, what is he staring at? Who's there? And she just shrugged and went, oh, I don't know. She said, just some girl. She's been in my room all night. <laughs> And I said, well, you know, be polite, please. Just because she's in spirit, you still need to use your manners. Um, who is she? She said, I don't know. You know, and I was in a hurry to get to school. I never did actually get to the bottom of who the girl was. But, you know, clearly she's very aware they're there. They're just part of her every day. And um, it's just normal for her. What about her dream excursions? Or the, uh, does she have the ability in that realm to where she's conscious to say, not tonight? Or that is a completely different realm entirely? 
Uh, I, she's never mentioned anything about dreaming at night, so I don't know that she does that or if she does. <laughs> Maybe because she doesn't dream, she is awake. <laughs> Have you ever thought yeah. about that or seen evidence of that? That. <laughs> No, I, I, I don't know. I don't think there's anything significant with her dreams that I'm aware of. So, no, I think plenty goes on in the day, never mind the night. <laughs> Let me ask you this, not to be personal, and f feel free to share only if you desire. Sure. Because she's in touch with the spirit realm, whatever that is for her, mm -hmm. to whatever level, does she ever talk to you about her belief? No, that would be a belief at that point. About her experience with God, Creator, higher source, consciousness, or or is it just she's so aware of that? There's no point to talk about it, Mom. You know I know about it. I know that you know I know about it, and that's where it sits. Or what is her place? No, in I, I I actually think she struggles with that because obviously at school they teach her something very different, and I think she struggles with all that school try and teach her about religion versus her own experiences with the spirit world she can't quite tally the two together so she hears what i what i think um but she's still trying to figure that one out on her own and i think you know she'll come to that in due course but i don't think she necessarily sees the world the way i do um she's more inclined to disbelieve what she's taught at school but i think it's very confusing for her to try and figure out you know the god thing and or how does that fit in with what's going on for me and um you know i'm not sure i believe in religion it's like well that's an interesting one given all that you can do but you know she's trying to make sense of it she's trying to figure out how does this gift i have fit in with that and i try and explain it to her but you know she's also 14 so mums don't always have the, the best answers for 14 year old girls so you know at some point, neither do fathers for a 14 year old boy <laughs> but you can I'm, I'm i'm sure i'm like you and many in this way you observe as a guiding light as a parent as a steward you know when to nudge your child and you know mm -hmm. when to lay back that is an art in and of itself and if you can perfect that you will raise a lighthouse with my son claire when he was young i did not teach him right or wrong i did not i taught him consequence and I would get on my knees to be at his level, and I would look him in his eyes when I was sharing something with him. And I would leave the TV with a cartoon on on purpose, because he wants to go that way. And I would gently nudge his chin back to here, and I would start all over. People say, well, Keith, why don't you just turn off the TV? I don't want to turn off the TV. I want him to learn how to focus. So I've never taught him right or wrong, but I taught him consequence. And I shared with him when I thought he was early... Uh, young and uh, old enough to comprehend. I said, son, you follow your dad's lead without question. I'll give you everything a boy could ever possibly want. Sounds like a bribe. I really don't care. I have a beautiful, <laughs> bright-eyed, very respectful, kind, generous soul for a son. Lovely, lovely. And so there's an art in raising your child. Raising. You don't beat your child down with smack. You raise them up. Raising faith. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, she's, you know, she's already just awesome, really. She's already, you can see her becoming the young lady that she is, you know, she's, she's so wise. And she, you know, she manages this gift really well in what's, yeah, it's difficult being 14, isn't it? Just regularly, never mind carrying this gift as well. And, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that She's dealing with things that even I don't know about. You know, recently when Tom's room was full of all of those people and I said, you know, who are they? What do they want? And she just shrugged and looked at the floor awkwardly. And I thought, mm, you know, more than you're letting on. And it was only later on when she was going to sleep. And I said to her, you know more, don't you? And she just nodded. And I said, but you're not allowed to tell me. No, she says. So there's, you know, she's 14 and carrying a huge responsibility and that she understands things that I'm not yet allowed to know. And I, I, I'm going to echo that, a big echo. I have a 14-year-old son, and whatever gifts any, any children have, speaking about your daughter, <laughs> when they're young, that's the experience. They don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. They're in the world, that world, created by God as to why they know they came here. When they get a little older, 13 and 14, I've been in that place, I want to find myself because I'm in this place called school, society, peers and colleagues and future this and 
I'm trying to find me and have all these hormones raging in my body that plants me on the earth. And so they, they're in this spin to where, and I would, I, I got the same hit. I got that hit when you were expressing, Claire, which is, there's more than she's letting on. And I want to say this much. I think where she is now in this unfolding of a flower with the gift and being 14 and trying to find her way in this place and anchor that there here is probably the most beautiful thing to watch. Mm. That she's coming into her own, truly, with both mm. worlds. And now watching her manipulate and <laughs> make sense of this and empower her future. That's got to be something to see. Yeah, well, it's really interesting. The last couple of days as well, um, I've been talking to other psychic mediums and interviewing them and so on. And two different, well, I've had three different psychic mediums have told me in the last couple of days how powerful Tom is and how important his role is going to be one day. Um, and that he has some extraordinary abilities. And that's why his room was full of people. They've come to see him. They've come to see who he is because he's going to do some amazing stuff one day. So, again, although he doesn't have the same gifts as Faith, he, he has his own gifts and they'll be very different. But, yeah, they're going to be really helpful and really useful one day if he chooses for them to be. So interesting, isn't it? It'd be great to see when he evolves into that. Yeah, and it's some people come in and they understand that there's a pressing, a mission behind it, and they cannot get out of it. They know that they have to do this. Some people come in and it's just a natural part of them. And it, I just came, I just came to Earth because I decided to come on vacation for a little while. I'm not here to do any freaking work. I just want to chill. Um, and I'm sure, like you, and I'm sure your son and your daughter would uh, would vouch, is that for me when all this started for me, and when I had that awakening, and I was in standing in the absolute presence. From that moment, it was like souls spirits guides were waiting in queue at a phone booth to use the phone to call me mm -hmm. and it wouldn't stop it would not stop it just would not the chatter would just go on and on and it wasn't one after another it was all of them at the same time yeah faith has had that and i think she's got better <laughs> a better control of that now but certainly when she was younger it was quite a problem in that they were keeping her awake at night they would wake her up at night to give me messages which i might add she never gave me because i'd say well what did they want she said i don't know i, I went back to sleep <laughs> but um yeah i know they'd wake me i think they'd wake her up to tell me about remedies to help people so they were using her as a channel to get to me to pass medicines to people to help other people so um, but she didn't, or she didn't often pass those on, to be honest. Uh, but she was certainly kept awake. She was, she, and she found it very frustrating that they'd all try and talk at once. And, um, you know, you could see her struggling and, and we just had to, we had to just talk to them and, and, and I said to her, you know, just ask them, tell them what you're experiencing so that they can tune it up better. You know, they can perhaps try and one at a time, you know, get your guides to manage this more, ask them for help. You know, you can't understand them because they're all talking at once. So she definitely had some difficulty there with um, so many messages coming in. Yeah. Wow. I'm just taking all this in. For me, Claire, when I was going through this period, there were times for me that I was wanting attention because I needed the attention. Because if I didn't express this somehow, I was going to explode. And it requires an ear, not that you're seeking it. Is this experience for you and your family? Has it created such a buzz that people are contacting you or you have control of it or it's at the perfect level? In other words, I do this a couple, three times a month. I'm good with that. How has it been? Is it creating such a buzz? Has I, I, would, I would assume that your daughter's not old enough or she's really probably not interested in doing this in a public way to like be of service to other people for readings and all that. Or Please tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, no, we kept completely quiet. We didn't talk to anyone about it. So even now, none of her friends know at school. Um, we've told some family members who politely nod and don't say much more. Um, most of our friends don't know. And those that do know have never confronted her about it or asked her because I've asked them not to. And she doesn't. She, she doesn't want to do this. She, she doesn't want anyone to ask her about it. Um, she was very happy for the book to be to be written um, because I explained how it could help lots of other families similar to ours 
And she was very happy to help with that. But we agreed she wouldn't be involved in it. She doesn't want um, anyone to particularly know who she is or to talk to anybody directly about it. So you know, she, she wants, wants to, to play like, on Earth. She yeah, wants to she be just, a, a person. <laughs> yeah, she just she just wants to get on with living her life. And I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure one day these gifts, if she chooses, are going to do some great work. But it's you know it's, it's in her hands really it's her gift so I just try to be respectful of the fact that it's down to her and she knows I love talking about it when she's wanting to talk about it I love hearing about it um and she knows that I'm involved with it so you know she does always have the opportunity to talk to me about it if she wants to but kind of just try and leave her to it most of the time let her get on with you know what she's trying to cope with at school and so on Everyone, Keith Anthony Blanchard here, Center of Light Radio, speaking with my phenomenal guest with a phenomenal story, Raising a Child Psychic Medium. Claire Waters is my guest tonight. We have a final segment. Stick around. Be right back. Enjoy some lavender soul. We all can use a change. It's time for a change, y'all. Enjoy it.
Welcome back to Center of Light. Keith Anthony Blanchard here. Yanava. Fall into that sacred part of yourself and life gets really juicy really quick. Having a fantastic fantastic conversation with my guest tonight, Ms. Claire Waters, and we're speaking about her psychic medium child, Faith, but also the family. Um, has your daughter ever brought up things about this is clickbait. Now this is this is for ratings, right? <laughs> has she <you> brought <laughs> might as well be honest. What about past lives? Has any of that stuff ever come up that she might have shared about yours, hers, or what? Yeah, um yeah, she certainly shared that we've had many past lives together. Um the only real past life I think she shared with us is the one about Tom. I talk about this in Raising Faith, where somebody was tapping insistently on my head one dinner time. And, uh, you know, it's tapping and tapping away on my head. It actually really hurt. And in the end, I said, okay, who is that? Can you just tell me who is it that's, that's there? And she kind of, you know, stopped and what she was doing, eating a dinner and focused. And she focused on a point between myself and Tom. And she kind of looked quite surprised. Her eyebrows went up and she's like, oh well, there's a little sailor boy stood next to you. And I was like, oh, okay, uh, who is he? What does he want? And she just said, um, I can't remember his name now, actually, but she said, oh, he's Tom's older brother. Um, and she said, he wants you to help Tom. He says Tom's being bullied at school. Uh, and I was like, wow. And, and I said, well, okay, first of all, you know, uh, tell me about the sailor outfit you know why is he wearing a sailor outfit and she said he says that he and Tom were on a boat together when they were brothers and uh, they were working on the boat so very young uh, working as sailor boys and they drowned on the, on the ship together at which point you know an eight-year-old Tom starts to sort of panic and leap into my lap <laughs> and um you know had to settle him down a little bit but uh and we, you know we had the conversation about are you being bullied? And he, and he had had some difficulties with children at school and he did then have more difficulties after this particular conversation. So um, I think it was a bit of a forewarning of what was coming. Nothing, you know, nothing horrific, just the usual kid stuff. But um, yeah, so we, we found that one out through her. Generally, no, not masses. Um, oh, I do know one about me. Yeah, no, she passed on. I have a, a nurse lady that visits me um and she and I apparently worked together on the front line she told me in the war we were nurses together in the war and this lady still visits me now so she was a friend apparently um she's another one that visits through smell um I love that I love that you said that another one that visits through smell people think what are you smelling her cologne <laughs> no um, a right, really right. strong smell of antiseptic cream is what I get really yeah. strong yeah. Wait, so, reason. have you had the experience? I have. I uh, have you, your daughter, or your son. So, you're sitting in a restaurant, eating your food. That's why you're there, right? And you have no intentions of delving into people's personal lives. And a couple comes sitting next to you with a couple of children. Oh, don't make me do this, please. <laughs> And so you find an excuse to work your way over there and say, ma'am, I don't know how to tell you this, but ta 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 Has that happened to you, your daughter, or you and your daughter when you're all in the same place? No, I mean, she would never volunteer information to strangers or even family members. She just doesn't. She, she doesn't even talk to her grandparents about it, you know. Um, so, no, she would never... Um, volunteer anything at all it's really yeah, yeah i didn't i didn't know for me in the incidents that it happened it wasn't like i want to go tell you a piece of information hoping it makes your day i didn't know that at her level of awareness that something says you may not like it but you need to scoot your little self over there and share this with this person like a deceased loved one that's just really pressing saying please be of service and share this with my loved one on earth no, not yet. She, there have been times when I'm aware that we're with someone that would love a message or, you know, for example, the, the vicar in our local village, her son died unexpectedly and Faith and I were walking home from school one day when she was younger 
And this poor lady just looked heartbroken. She, she'd she obviously been for a walk, grieving, very distressed. And um, I didn't say anything to the lady because I'd, it was nothing I could say at this point myself. But when she passed, I turned to Faith and I said, is there anyone walking with her? And she said, yes. Yeah. She said, there's a man or a boy um, with a rucksack on walking with her. And I said, oh, gosh, I said, I knew it would be the lady's son that she was obviously grieving for and thinking of. And I wish, you know, I wish that uh, we could have said something, but but we couldn't really. It's, you know, I, I don't know that she would have believed us. She's the local vicar for a start. Um, but secondly, you know, Faith wouldn't want anybody to know what she could do in our village. So couldn't say it for that reason as well. Um, but so there are there are times when I know she is aware of people nearby that would bring comfort to someone if they were believers. But she's never really had the confidence um, to deal with that or to say anything up to date. So perhaps when she's a bit older, she might. Claire, what you would like, what would you like all of us to know about your experience, about your daughter, whatever it is, about all this that has happened to you and still happening, what would you like the listening audience to know in case, one, there may be a family who's going through this. It's not a curse, but yet. <laughs> Just what is it, darling? Well, if they're listening to your show, they're probably already open-minded to these sorts of matters right. anyway. But really, you know, Raising Faith, I wrote to help other families like my own and for anyone interested in spiritual matters and for anyone grieving but perhaps would feel some comfort from understanding how loved ones can contact us and the ways they can use and just the reassurance that our loved ones do go on. Um, for anyone raising children like my own, of which I believe there are many out there and many more coming through and, you know, being born into this world, there are some tips in raising faith to help you and also really just to read about our own experiences. I think just by sharing our experiences with each other, we can inspire and learn from each other. So that was my purpose behind writing Raising Faith was just to share the stories, to get a conversation going, to open that doorway so people feel more comfortable talking about it. You know, we didn't have anyone to talk to. And I would love to be someone that people can come to for advice and, you know, to ask questions and just to get a, you know, an, an understanding of how we how we handle that, that perhaps might be helpful to others. So as I'm sitting here listening to you dialogue, <laughs> I'm getting this double entendre and the title of this magical book, Raising Faith. It happens to be your daughter's name. Mm -hmm. But raising faith as to why you said you would like to share this with others so yeah. they can raise their faith in what is freaking happening to them. Did you become aware of that little word play yeah. right there before came, when you dissolved? It came to me quite quickly. And it was meant, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was definitely meant to be. Um, and it is that. It's about spreading the light. It's about sharing the message. It's about, yeah, raising people's faith in life goes on. Your loved ones are still with you. You know, you're never alone. Um, you always have people there to help and support you, as well as your loved ones. You know, you have your spirit guides, you have angels and so on. You know, there's so many beings there to help you. Um, and I think sometimes you can get lost in the fog of the difficulties in life and you forget those things. Um, particularly, I think, when, when people are grieving. I think, you know, there's a lot of people really stuck in grief. It, it really does knock the wind out of lots of people. And I think it's comforting just to read a story like ours to understand there is no doubt. Life does go on. They are still with you. You can still talk to them. You know, they're there all the time wanting you to live your life and to get on and to be the best that you can be um, rather than being stuck in that grief. So, yeah, no, that was intentional. Thank you for joining me on Center of Light Radio. I just truly loved this conversation with you. Pleasure. Thank you for letting me talk. It's been great. Absolutely. And it's really, really trusting of you to divulge something so personal about your child. Mm -hmm. That is a quality I recognize. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. No, I hope it helps others out there, which is the main reason for it. So I do. I hope it helps. Would you leave us a short uh, out statement as well as your contact information, anything you want to say about how our audience can find you, whatever it is you want to impart? Sure. Well, there's a website, which is raisingfaith.co.uk, where you can go and get more information. 
Uh, there is a section people can share their own stories and experiences. I would love to hear more experiences on that page. Um, I'm also going to be loading videos with other psychic mediums and healers imminently. I've, I've done quite a few interviews. I just have to edit them and load them up. So that's going to be really valuable to anybody else out there interested in this topic. Because uh, just today I talked to a couple who do spirit clearances and from attachments and from buildings. So that's one of the fears a lot of people have about spirit is, you know, what if I have a visitation that I don't want? Um, so just stay tuned to the website, sign up to the newsletter, have a look at the Facebook page and follow us on there because all new updates go on there too. And if you'd like to read a copy of Raising Faith, it's available everywhere, but particularly on Amazon. So, you know, all around the world, there's lots of people following in Australia, New Zealand and America. So, yeah, just grab a copy if it's if it's your cup of tea and and I hope it helps. Did I hear something in there? I would like you to go there and post your experiences. Are you yeah. going to write a second book or is mummy done? <laughs> no, I would love to. And I, and I am. You're going There's to. There's no doubt. Yeah. You're going that, to. No, it, that will come at some point. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But it'll, it, for me, it needs to be a book that helps people. There needs to be a reason to write it. You know, it needs to be something that will inspire and uplift others. So, yeah, when the, when the subject and the topic is clear, then I will. But I'm still working on that. I love that fire in you. Everyone, my guest tonight, Miss Claire Waters, speaking about her child, uh, Faith, raising a child psychic medium. Her family, she's the, she's the lady. She's raising the family, not just the child. <laughs> <laughs> and she's raising the consciousness by being here on Center of Light Radio. Faith, uh, Claire, thank you again, dear. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Bye, Keith. Yes. Check it out. How awesome is that? How much fun did I just have? Oh, my God, you have no idea. Right. I'm going to be doing a presentation here shortly in about 30, maybe 40 minutes, 30 minutes on fire. I'm not going to be on fire. The presentation is about fire. Show up. Fire. Uh, uh, uh. Woo, 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 woo. Fire.